Morning, Sir Royston. Morning. How are you today? Yes, very good. So, uh, tell me a little bit about how the world travel market went. And well, the um, the show went very well. Um, there was good attendance. Um, as usual, I was part of the Grenada booth, and um, that's where I operated. And I saw a lot of the major tour operators, people that I deal with. Mm -hmm. And um, in addition, I saw some other people who want to look, who are looking at Grenada to do in a program. Okay. So I would say overall, it was a success. Okay, well that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, <coughs> so uh, going on to the award now, uh, Virgin, uh, the largest uh, tour um, company that sells to the Eastern Caribbean. And uh, tell us a little bit about their, their platinum program. Well, first of all, Virgin Holidays is one of the biggest tour operators that come into the Caribbean. They're very big into Florida, but they have a wide network of holidays that sell worldwide. Vegas, Dubai, Mauritius. I mean, they're really global. And um, in particular in Grenada and the Eastern Caribbean, they are one of the... In Grenada in particular, it's by far the biggest tour operator. and They're bringing most business into the country as an individual tour operator. Um, but they have different categories. Um, they have different categories of hotels in various categories. But our hotel is in their platinum category worldwide. Okay. So basically the, um, the award is a worldwide award from Virgin in its platinum category. Okay. And when I put platinum, <clears throat> I'm referring to all the top hotels say in Vegas. Okay. You know, the Bellagio, the Wynn. Um, in Dubai, Royal Mirage, and all of those top so, hotels. And obviously, there are platinum hotels in the Caribbean region also. Right. So you're among the best of the best. Well, we try. Um, you know, we, we won the award. Um, in order to win, you have to, have a, you have to achieve at least 98% CSQs. That is the questionnaires from the guests as to how your hotel rates. Okay. Because that's the only way you can win. Okay. If I if you went in there at ninety seven, ninety six percent, you cannot win gold. Okay. This year we won the gold award with our CSQs at ninety nine percent. Okay. Wow. Excellent. All right. <coughs> oh, that's great. Um, when did you first win this award? What what year did you? Well, win? I I won it six years ago. Six so years. this is the sixth consecutive year that the Spice Island Beach Resort have won the gold um, the gold category in their platinum category. Okay. The okay. gold award in their platinum in the pla category. <laughs> category. <laughs> all right. Gets confusing <laughs> with all the colors. Uh, well, congratulations, first of all. Um, I, what does it feel like to win it? So, tell me, what was it like to win it the first time? Uh, you know, how many years? Well, the first time was a revelation because before the hotel closed or before the hurricane, we um, cropped the silver award for two consecutive years. Okay. And after I reopened the hotel, um, then we have won the platinum every year consecutively since for the okay. last six years. All right. So it is um, an, a tremendous achievement, but that achievement I credit to my entire management team, the entire staff. Right. I refer to it as the extended Hopkins family, <laughs> because you have to have you have to be coordinated on all fronts. You have to be the guests judge you on your facilities. Our facilities are on par with any of the top resorts anywhere. But um, what I think defines us is our service and our food. And the human resource aspect of it, I think, is the one that drives us to get these high CSQs. Right. Because at my resort, I have a full-time human resource manager, assistant manager in charge of that. So training is, con in, is continuous year-round. Right. And I think that's, that credits us with a, a very high CSQs, in addition to our management team who train, continuously train in all the various departments. Right. So <coughs> what does it mean for them, or for you, for your, your I management? I would say it's great. It's great for my uh, staff because um, if, you, if you crop an award like that, um, they're the ones that have to be recognized. I am the custodian of the award as the owner of Spice Island Beach Resort. However, my staff are the ones that make it happen. Of course, <coughs> The only credit I can take it is my vision, my pension for excellence, right. and my pension for you know, no nonsense. And I try to keep raising the bar every year higher and higher, because that's the only way you could compete. I mean, mm -hmm. this year we tied with the win in Las Vegas, 
Okay. And the win is the top hotel there. Right. Um, for the goal, there out of the six years we tied for goal twice, only. Okay. okay. But uh, so it just tells you how competitive you got. Ninety nine percent CSQs, yeah, but you still tied. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with a uh, one of the world top world top um, resorts. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so I mean, you won it six times in a row now. Uh, the first time you won it compared to the sixth time, is it losing its appeal now? Or no, it cannot lose its appeal. Is it like, wow, like six, like how much no, better can no, this no, get? No, to? no, no, I'm, I, I, I'm trying to achieve the best at all levels in a hotel year round, not just for Virgin clients. Okay. However, cropping the Virgin Award for the sixth time, um, it says something to the resort, to its positioning, um, because quite frankly, there has been no hotel to date in Grenada that has put Grenada on the map as a world-class facility. And it will take a very long time for another facility to come up and be measured as how, how the Spice, Spice Island, Island Beach Resort is now measured in terms of its world standing and the accreditation which it has earned. Yeah. So that, this is what makes me very proud. Um, as a five-star hotel owner, I think and I believe I'm the only Caribbean man, homegrown, that owns a five-star boutique resort in the Caribbean region. You have a lot of transplanted people that have come in one generation after the other who perhaps might have. And I'm discounting, I'm taking out people like Sandals, because right. Sandals is another brand. Right. Um, but... As a small boutique resort, I am the only Caribbean homegrown person that yeah. has a boutique resort. Yeah. So that makes it very challenging for me and for us at the resort. Yeah. Because as a homegrown Caribbean person, I have to do twice as much to qualify. Um, we, we all know the world we live in. Yeah. So I have to be a lot better than someone who perhaps comes into Grenada tomorrow morning and opens a boutique like mine, I still have to be better than Damn. that in order to qualify because of the world we live in. Right. Okay. And uh, yeah, as you say, <coughs> I mean, you're competing against uh, the, the winning in Las Vegas. So they seem to be on the Yeah, we beat, competitor. we beat the Royal Mirage in, um, in, in, in Dubai. Um, there are about 20 hotels in the Caribbean region that are in their platinum program. Because their platinum program, it's only the five-star resorts, big and small. Mm -hmm. So we, have, we are in the other category. So this award is not best small hotel in the Caribbean, best boutique hotel in the Caribbean. It's best platinum hotel in their worldwide program. Wow. And this is the significance of the award. Yeah. I mean, you've spoken <coughs> about, you know, uh, what you've done for Grenada so far. What, I mean... What does this mean now? You've got it a sixth time. How does this impact Grenada? Well, it, it keeps Grenada on the map. Um, it's, the, it's the, as I said, so far, unless somebody comes up with some other resort, mm -hmm. it's the only resort that has, continues to be measured on the world stage and competing not with hotels in Grenada. Um, I passed that years ago. Or hotels in the Caribbean. I see myself as competing with all the and be measured with all the resorts in the world right. in that if someone is going to choose or is in England for example and he is he wants to go to a boutique resort he would look at the Caribbean with the top five star boutiques he would look at Mauritius he'd look at Seychelles he would look at the Wynn he would look at Dubai and you know the Maldives he is looking at a se selection of five-star resorts to choose his holiday from. Mm -hmm. And we have to come up on that antenna in okay. order for him to see us. Okay. And that is who I'm competing with. Okay. I don't know. And we're I, at the top of the antenna. I, yeah, I'm not competing with anybody in Grenada. As a matter of fact, I compete with myself. Right. That is who I measure myself with. True perfectionist. I keep looking at what I'm capable of doing and what I'm capable of continuing to do, raising the bar all the time. And this is what we have done. Okay. At the Spice Island Beach Resort so, over the years. Right, so you've just drilled the anchors a little this further is into the ground. Because with even the though split. I'm one of those, even though I get, I've got 99% CSQs, um, like this afternoon I'll have a big celebration with my staff, 
because it's their award from the guy who sweeps the, in, the, in, the, on the, in the garden, the kitchen helper who washes the dishes, to the receptionist, to my general manager, Mr. Hardy, all my assistant managers. They are the ones that have to give credit. But I drive, I drive it. I don't micromanage the resort. I empower. But I am a stickler for excellence, and I don't compromise. And, you know, if you, you might get 100%, which I've gotten a few years with, with Virgin and other, my CSQs from my guests. Mm -hmm. But um, a point I'd like to make, I always tell my staff, that even though we might be measured and we got 100% or 99% CSQs, it does not mean that we are truly 9%, 99%. Reason for saying that, we might have, say, a breadfruit soup or a bread nut soup, bread, breadfruit soup on the menu. Mm -hmm. Now, you could make an excellent bread, breadfruit soup, which tastes very nice, second to none. Now, I, I could taste, once in a while, I'll taste the breadfruit soup and it has a little too much potato in it. Or, and you cannot taste the breadfruit. Now, the guests would have an excellent soup. That's how I measure myself. So okay. if I know it's not what I want, I continue to improve okay. and speak to the chef to do it in such a way that it reflects what these things are. Because a guy staying in Grenada does not know a lot of these Christophine and breadfruit and a lot of tanya and yam mm -hmm. and we make soups and things out of all of it. He's not able to measure it because he doesn't know. He doesn't know anybody. But we, I am able to measure it with my team. Okay. And what I continuously do when I travel, I go to the top three Michelin star restaurants, two Michelin star restaurants, which are the best in the world. And I measure how I come up against these people. Right. And I stay in nice resorts, so I'm able to measure and know what the actual standard out there is. And I just strive okay. to achieve that standard and beyond. Okay. So even though you got 99%, you're saying there's a lot more than 1% room for improvement. Most definitely. Most definitely. I don't so rest on my laurels at all. Otherwise, okay. that would be the beginning of the end of you right. in business. Yeah. Because today, everybody's getting better and better by the day, by the hour. And you've got to keep pace with what's going on. Because remember, the guy who chooses Spice Island Beach Resort, he is traveling worldwide in the best resorts in the world. So he's, he's able to measure you. Or he measures you on that basis. He's okay. well-traveled. It's not like the good old days. A guest would come down to Grenada or the Caribbean. And 25, 30 years ago, the Caribbean was the place of choice. A guest would come to you every year. He said, don't change anything. Don't improve everything. It's good as it is. And he keeps coming. Today, the world has changed. People know what is a good standard, and they expect you to deliver that standard. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the areas I think um, I measure myself to, things always go wrong. But it's the ability to deal with it. Because a guest at that point, if you, something goes wrong, you deal with it in the right way. Mm -hmm. um, then you, you, he measures you even better than if everything went 100% because yeah. he knows what your capacity is. On, for example, on Friday night, I went to <clears throat> a major restaurant um, in England. Um, a celebrity chef owns it. And the service was abominable. Okay. So we were there with a dinner party. Some friends took me to this. But the owner was there, a celebrity, world celebrity chef. When, we, when the, my friend who was paying the bill said, <clears throat> the dinner was good, but your service was abominable. We had to wait 20, 30 minutes for the guy to come and after choosing the wine to serve it. And it was tardy. Every time the, the meals came out from the kitchen, the waiters and waitresses will have a conference to determine who gets what on the table. Okay. So when my friend was paying the bill, he mentioned to the maitre d', we came to this restaurant because you are one of the top names in this country. We are very disappoint disappointed with the service. We've given you, I mean, so... In 15 minutes, the owner of the restaurant, the celebrity chef, came out. Good evening, folks. How, are, how is everything? Did everything go well? So my friend said, no, your service, we gave you a 2 out of 10. 
and you're lucky what you got that. He said, this is the kind of feedback I want. Um, I apologize. He took the service charge off of the, the, the bill. Um, and then when we were leaving, he, um, I gave him my card while it's on the table. And he gave a few of us his signed copy of his book. Okay. Because he, he writes a big cookery book. He's a, he's a celebrity okay. with his compliments. Right. So that is what you call damage control. Now, if he did not come out, because obviously the maitre d' told him, we cocked up on this table. Mm -hmm. The maitre d' first apologized. He came out as the owner, took it straight on his chest, apologized, took off the service charge, the discretionary service charge. And at the end of the day, I will go back to that restaurant because it's how it was handled. Because of what he did. And how it was handled. Yeah. Because at Spice, it's the same. If we have a problem, the general manager, if he's on duty, has to handle it. And if it's very serious, I go straight to the guest okay. and apologize okay. because the buck stops with me. Right. And then you rectify it. You flag that particular customer for the rest of his stay. Right. And at the end of the day, he's able to measure you. And even though there was a mistake, he measures you and he still gives you 100% because he knows that things will happen in any business. But part of it is how you handle, and that is where the training um, and the whole human resource side of a business comes up. You don't duck, you don't shy away. Yeah. You send a bottle of champagne to the guy's room. Sometimes you might have a guest very, he had an air condition giving him a lot of problems, and we tried to fix it or something like this. I had to give him a room change. Okay. At the end of the week or two, I'll just say, I've discounted a day accommodation from your thing because I don't think you were happy you had to move two rooms in order for us to deal with your situation yeah now at the end of the day you're getting a hundred percent from that guy yeah so it means so getting 99 percent does not mean that things do not happen things always happen yeah. trust me yeah but it's how you handle it at the at when the, the any crisis takes place and that is how get, um, people measure your as to what you are. Okay. Well, so that's a very important lesson uh, to be learned. No matter what you're doing, uh, it's never going to be <coughs> perfect. But uh, how you, you know, handle it? And how hand, you deal handle it, deal with it, move on, move yeah, past it, definitely. and uh, it still comes out well. Yeah. So uh, I'm talking about your guests a little bit. I mean, where where are your guests coming Six, from? Sixty-five percent of my guests come from the United Kingdom. Okay. You get about twenty-five percent from the states, and the rest, the other. Trinidad is a bit is growing into a strong market but okay. um, I see a lot of potential there but that is because we have adequate flights out of the United Kingdom you have British Airways Virgin Monarch and um, in the States over the years we've been having a lot of problems with flights um, you now have American you have just one Delta and two Caribbean Airlines out of the United States um, we only have something in out. so wherever you have good air service you are able to go out and market to sustain. Right. Whereas if you have spotty air service, then you have a problem. So now you're doing a lot more marketing and you're seeing a lot greater effects out of the United States market because you have American coming in three times a week. Okay. As I said, Delta and Caribbean Airlines. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, so your, your guests that are, uh, sorry, I apologize. <laughs> you said that repeat business is obviously a great way to measure uh, you know, how well you're doing. If people want to come back to your resort, yeah. then it shows that you did well mm -hmm. the first time. Uh, but typically, I'd say with the people that are going to five-star resorts, they want to move around a bit. They've experienced one resort, and so mm -hmm. next week they want to go and see Dubai. And they, they travel on a regular <laughs> basis, and they're, they're less likely to go back to the, the same place. Are you seeing yes, a lot I'm of seeing repeat? That. Or? I'm seeing, yes, um, in last, last February. 44% of my guests in a hotel were repeat guests. Okay. Um, that does not happen year round. But in the peak periods where people travel, um, Christmas, on mid, mid January, mid March, you get about 40, 45% repeat guests. But you're correct. That's why I was saying the world is now an oyster, and that is planet Earth. Yeah. And unlike 30 years ago, everybody came to the Caribbean because it was the only destination that was known. Yeah. All these other new destinations, that the Dubais and the Mauritius, 
Seychelles, Maldives. These are destinations that have um, um, grown and come on board in the last 30 years. Prior to that, everybody only came here. So you got a higher, the, in those old days, you had repeats, repeat guests going up to 70%. Now it's difficult to achieve more than 40, 45% on a sustained basis because of the same point. People have choices. I just, on the plane yesterday, I met a repeater um, um, who comes out every year, but he hadn't come for the last two years. Okay. He said, well, he went to Mauritius last year because, and he went to another major destination. So it's not that he does not want to come to you. And then he said, well, I went to Mauritius last year, and I told my wife, why are we not at Spice once again? So I saw him on the aircraft coming back, but the last time he was here was two years ago. So that happens because people, there's so much choice out there. All of us do the same. Even though you like a particular destination and a particular resort, you want to experience everything that is out there on planet Earth because these people have the means to travel the world. Today. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so Royston, uh, thank you very, very much for coming in and, and talking with us this morning. Congratulations on your sixth uh, gold platinum award. Oh, platinum gold. Uh, oh, a six gold award in, in the, the platinum, platinum can, worldwide, can. platinum worldwide category. Okay, so it's six gold award in the platinum worldwide category, and we look forward to many more gold awards from you. So thank well, you we very much. Thank All you right. very much. Nice chatting with you. My pleasure.